Stitches show. It's November, which means it's time for the 11th installation in our calendar blanket for 2020, the Patchwork Calendar Blanket Quilt. This month we're going to do the double framed square. So this is a square in the center with basically two frames built around it, plus the border. You can do this in two colors like I've done, or three colors <laughs> like this one here. And of course, if you're looking for some other color inspiration, Mr. and Stitches will put a few ideas over here that you can check out as well. As always, we're using the same yarn and the same hook size that we've been using all along for this project, and we're going to talk a little bit more about materials coming up very shortly. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up the double framed square together. For our November square, I'm using the same type of yarn and the same hook size that I have for the previous squares in this project. That's a size for medium weight acrylic yarn for me and a 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a 5 in the UK. A pair of scissors and a needle rounds out the tools and the amount of yarn you need for each section is as follows. So your center square section, you're going to need around 9 yards of colour. For the middle frame section, you want around 27 yards of colour. And for the outer frame section, you want around 45 yards of colour. Don't forget your border, there's around 9 or 10 yards required here. And of course, you can do this in a three colour format, a two colour format, or a multi-colour format, like we discussed in the intro. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Keep your hooks and tools handy with Lula and Gwen in this cute zippered pouch by your Stitches friends. Purchase a pouch and help out our show. The Teespring link can be found down below. Like always, I recommend drawing a quick graph and colouring it in so that you've got a colour graph to follow as we build our square. You can start by drawing one large square drawing a smaller square inside that frame, and then finally drawing a smallest square in the very centre. We are building it in patches, so the first square is one patch, then that is surrounded by four individual patches, surrounded again by four more individual patches. So if you are changing up the colours quite a bit on this square, it is very helpful to have that coloured pattern sorted out beforehand, so you know exactly what to do in what order. We begin with patch number one, or the actual center square. So you're going to grab the middle color of your little design. For me, that's blue. We all begin with a slip knot on our hook. Every patch begins with a slim slip knot. And we're going to chain 14 to begin. Once you have a chain of 14, you're going to count back three chains from the hook, find the fourth one, and double crochet into it. Like the other squares in this series, we are using the double crochet stitch. This three chain turning here that we've just used to get up to the right height, that's going to count as a double crochet for row one. And you're going to double crochet in each chain all the way back to the beginning. At the end of row one, including your three turning chains, you will have 12 double crochet stitches. At the end of row one, we have 12 stitches. That includes the chain three turning chains over here. Every row from, the, from now until the end of the square begins with a chain two. The chain two at the beginning of a row counts as a double crochet, so flip your work. And because the turning chains count as a double crochet, we skip that first stitch. So if you are looking at your work, this is where you would normally want to put your hook. You're skipping it because the chain two is using it. So pretend your chain two is a physical double crochet worked into that stitch. Always skip it. Instead, you're going to work the first stitch into the next 
stitch. There's your actual first double crochet worked. And you see that chain two counts as a double crochet. There's the first two stitches of your row complete. Double crochet into each stitch across. And we're going to double crochet into the top of the chain two or the turning chains, however you want to think about it. You always treat the turning chains as a stitch, so when you get to the end of a row, make sure you don't miss working into them. The last stitch in every row is worked into the top of the turning chains. So if you want to spin it around just so you can see, there's the top of the chains. You just plunk your hook right through the top of the turning chains and double crochet. So don't miss the top of the chains because they count as a stitch. That's 12 double crochet stitches at the end of row two. You're going to chain two at the beginning of every row, turn your work, skip that first stitch because it's already accounted for, double crochet into the next stitch instead, double crochet into each stitch across including the top of the chain two or the turning chains, and you're going to work six rows in total for our first patch. This is the very center square of our November square. That's the end of row six. Six rows in total in our center square patch and every row has 12 stitches in it. Don't forget that stitch count includes your turning chains. We are going to fasten off now. You can weave in your tails as you go, or you can work over top of them, whatever is most comfortable for you. We're going to flip our work. We're going to work on patch number two, followed by patch number four. So the patches that sit on the top and the bottom of our center square. So whatever color number two is, you're going to grab that now. We're going to start with a slip knot. Every patch begins with a slip knot. We're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch in the top of the last stitch we worked on our center square. And I like to pull my knots to the inside of my work. That helps keep my edges nice and tidy. Every row begins with a chain two. You can really see how that chain two counts as a double crochet because it is literally worked into that first stitch space now. So I hope you can see that. And you're just going to double crochet in each stitch all the way across, including the top of the chain two. You'll still have 12 stitches at the end of row one of patch number two. And then you're going to chain two, turn, double crochet all the way back, chain two, turn, double crochet all the way back. You want three rows in total for patch number two. Each row will have 12 stitches in it. Don't forget the chain two. That's rows one, two, and three for patch number two. They're built directly onto the top of patch number one. Each row still has 12 stitches in it. You're going to fasten off at the end of row three. And like I said, you can weave in your tails or you can work over top of them as we go. We're going to turn our piece around so that patch number two is on the bottom. We're working on patch number four now. So if you're looking at your square, we've done the center square, we did patch number two, we have turned it around, and now we're going to repeat the exact same thing across the bottom of it. So whatever color that is, we begin with a slip knot. You can join your yarn in that first foundation chain where your little tail is still hanging off, if your tail is still there. <laughs> join with a slip stitch chain two, that counts as a double crochet, and then you're going to double crochet into each foundation chain or basically into the underside of each of those stitches from row one of patch number one. You'll still have 12 when you get across to the end, and then you're just going to repeat everything you did for patch number two. You're going to work 11 double crochets after your chain two, chain two, turn, double crochet all the way back, chain two, turn, double crochet all the way back. So you're still going to have three rows of 12 double crochets worked across the bottom of our middle square now. That's three rows for patch number four. So there's patch one, patch two, and patch four. Three and five are on the other sides of our middle square. 
So we'll just pull up our graph again. Patch 1 patches 2 and 4 because 3 and 5 are the slightly larger patches to the side. We're going to turn now and use, and work on patch number 3 or the patch that's um, on this side of our square. So whatever color you're doing, you want to, if you're changing colors, fasten off just like you did for patch number 2. If you're not changing colors like me, then there's a handy little trick here. We're just going to turn our square so that now you're looking at it to work this patch, which is patch number three. So patch one, patch two, patch four, patch three, patch five. We're gonna chain two, because if you're changing colors, you're gonna start with a slip knot, you're gonna join your yarn in the edge of that last stitch from the last row you worked and chain two. But if you're not changing colors, you're just gonna change two from where you're standing and work another double crochet right through the side of that first stitch. So we've done this many times now across this project series. You're going to work two double crochet per row edge anytime you're working down the raw side of a double crochet stitch or what is a turning chain of two. So if you hit a two turning chains, just work a double crochet into each of those chains. If you're working across the side of a double crochet, try to get two loops over your hook so that you're not only grabbing a top loop or an edge loop, you want at least to get two loops or two pieces of that stitch over top of your hook. Do not work around the stitch because that will create gapping. So try to get through the stitch and get two loops over top of your hook. That creates a nice solid base for those stitches. Including that chain two, you'll have two, four, six stitches or two stitches per row work down that first side. You're gonna continue two stitches per row edge all the way down the side of your piece. So we're working on patch number three and with two rows per, or per two stitches I should say per row edge, you're going to have 24 stitches in total at the end of your first row. But working that first row, it's always the same thing. Try to make sure you get those two loops over top of your hook. There we go. Take your time. No need to rush. You want it to look as neat as possible. And whenever you get lost, just pull it apart and go, oh yes, there's my next row. There's that stitch across the edge. I'm just gonna fit two in there. There are six rows in total across that first patch that we made. So six times two is 12. You should have 12 double crochet worked down the edge of it. That is row one of patch number three. So you should have six double crochet, including that turning chain of two or the chain two that you started the row with. That's six across the side of this first patch, 12 stitches across the side of our center patch, and another six stitches across the side of our last patch. So 24 double crochet in total. We're gonna chain two, turn our work, as always, we're gonna skip that first stitch because it's already accounted for. Double crochet in each stitch across, double crochet in the top of the chain two. Chain two, turn, work one more row of double crochet. You want three rows in total of double crochet for patch number three, sandwiched between patches two and four, <laughs> worked around our center square. And three rows total, each row will have 24 double crochet stitches in it. That's three rows in total for patch number three. So once again, there's patch one, two, three, and now patch four. Then we did two and four before we're doing three and five. At the end of the third row, you can fasten off, weave in your tail if you're weaving them in as you go, or you can just leave it out, work over top of it later. We're going to just flip our work around and we're going to start on patch number five. So obviously this is the final piece around our center square. So this is the middle frame. The middle frame section is what I like to call it. We've done patches two and four. We did number three. Now we're doing number five. So whatever color that is, we're going to begin 
with a slip knot on our hook. And I'm going to work over top of my short tails. We're going to join our yarn in the edge of the top row or the last row of our bottom patch there. Got all these little tails hanging. Here we go. So joining with a slip stitch. And of course, if you were changing color for every single patch, whenever you join yarn in the side, it's sort of along the side of a patch, that's what you do. Join it right near the top of the stitch through the side of the stitch, making sure you get two loops over top of your hook. We chain two to begin the row, because every row begins with a chain two, counts as a double crochet, and double crochet once more into the side of that stitch. I'm going to get my little stitches and my tails out of the way so you can see that I'm getting two loops over top of my hook. I am not working around the stitch, I am working through it. And just like we worked the opposite patch, you're going to work a double crochet, two double crochets in fact, into the edge of each row, all the way along the side of our piece here. You'll have six double crochet along the top and bottom patches, so six here and six here, and 12 across the middle patch, and that'll be 24 stitches in total. Chain two, turn, double crochet, all the way back, chain two, turn, double crochet, all the way back. For three rows in total, you're basically just mirroring the patch on the opposite side of our piece here. So there's three rows of patch number five completed. We now have our center square and our middle frame of our overall square complete. So that's five patches in total. Each of those four patches around our second square has three rows. These ones have 12 stitches each in per row. These ones have 24 stitches each per row. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing for the outer frame. So before we begin, we're going to snip our yarn, fasten off. From where you are, you're just going to turn your work and we're going to work the next two patches. So here we are, we've completed the center frame. We are now going to work these two patches, which are number six and number eight. Number six and number eight, exactly the same way you did numbers two and four. So we're going to pick up the colors that start with either of those patches. So you can decide based on your color square, but my entire outer frame is all the same color. And you're going to join with a slip stitch in the top of that stitch. And these two patches, just like patches two and four, are very simple. You chain two to begin, double crochet into each stitch all the way across, chain two, turn, and you're doing three rows in total. Each of these patches, patches seven, or I should say patches six and eight, are going to have 24 stitches per row, and they're three rows tall. So exactly the same as we did when we made the middle two and four patches. Nice and simple. So you can go ahead, work at those two patches, and I will catch up with you in a little bit. All right, that's patches six and eight complete. Each square, or each patch, I should say, has 24 stitches in it, and they are three rows tall, and they are worked out the opposite sides of those final patches from our center frame. So if you're changing colors, you wanna fasten off and grab your next color. We are now doing the long patches, the two long patches, numbers seven and nine on either side to finish off that outer frame. So whatever color your patch number seven is, you're gonna change to if you're changing colors. If you're not changing colors, you can do what I'm doing. Turn your work. So we're working down this side, chain two, and that chain two counts as the first stitch in the first row of patch number seven. And this is how it breaks down. We're gonna have 36 stitches in total across each row for these two last patches. Of course, there will be three rows because we want it to match all the other patches in this little thing. You're gonna work two double crochet per row edge. So you've got three rows and three rows to work down. So three, or I should say six and six, that'll be 12 double crochets worked down the sides of those two patches. Then you have actual stitches to work across the center. So that's 12 there. And then another three rows and another three rows or six and six. So that's how it breaks down. Six, six, 12, six and six for a total of 36 stitches across the edge 
of that first row for our seventh patch. Remember, you are sticking your hook through the stitch or the chain that makes up the edge of that previous row. Try to get two loops on your hook. It just helps create a stronger anchor and you don't end up with any gaps. You're working through the stitch, not around it. And you have a nice, even edge created. So there's the first six stitches worked down that three row patch. You're going to repeat that for this patch. And then these two guys out the other end, remember you've actually got 12 real stitches across the center. So it's like a little break halfway through. <laughs> So that's 36 stitches across the first row from patch number seven. There's six stitches across the edge of each of those short patches, 12 across the middle. Don't forget that the top of one of those stitches is going to be the top of a chain two, so don't miss it. Just try to pull back and look at each patch as though you've got six here, six here, 12, six, and six. That's the easy way to do it so that you're not trying to worry about the placement of individual stitches. 36 stitches in total. Rest of the patch is nice and simple. Chain two, turn, double crochet in every single stitch all the way across. Remember that first stitch is always accounted for. Don't forget the top of the chain two and we'll see you at the end of row three for patch number seven. That's three rows in total for patch number seven. There are 36 stitches in each row. And of course that includes the chain two. At the end of the third row, you're going to snip your yarn, fasten off, weave in your tails or worry about them later. And then spin your square around. We're going to work our final patch now. It's again the mirror image of this guy down here. You're going to work six double crochet across this patch edge six across this patch edge. You've got 12 double crochet regular stitches to work across here. Another six, another six, that's 36 in total. We grab that final patch color. I'm still using blue. Begin with a slip knot. We join our yarn through the stitch. So one little slip knot, chain two, that counts as a double crochet. I'm going to finish off the edge of that first row with another double crochet, worked through the stitch, and off we go. Same thing as the previous patch, 36 stitches in total for the first row, 36 stitches in total for each of the next two rows. You're going to repeat that previous patch pretty much exactly, and we'll be finished the base of our square. And there we go. That's the end of patch number nine, the last patch in our square. It's got three rows and each row has 36 stitches in it, just like the patch directly opposite it. Now you can fasten off, weave in all of your short ends. We're gonna put our border on now, but if you were going to make a nice big square baby blanket, you could keep going. You could keep using the same pattern. All you would do is fasten off your final patch for this next frame and then you want to start a new frame. So you just flip your square over. I like to start the short patches that are in each frame by working across the tops of the stitches of the row before so it's kind of brainless. You'd have 36 across here, you would do another three rows, same thing at the bottom. Then you would turn it and you would work across all of those, so the, the, the three, the three, the three, the three, and all the center stitches. So every single time you would add increase by adding another frame, start with the short ones, add the long ones second, and then same and same and same. So you're just repeating the same basic frame enlarging pattern until you get a nice big square. And of course, in that direction, you could have all sorts of different colors. You could do all of your patches a different color if you were eating up scraps. Um, or you could just do every single frame, sort of pink, blue, pink, blue, whatever you want to do. And um, once you're done, just put on a simple little border and you've got a really neat looking baby blanket. So if you wanted to give that a try, that's another neat way to use this particular pattern. But for us today, we are going to make this the same size as the rest of our squares. So it fits in with the rest of our calendar blanket. We're going to snip our yarn, 
fast enough, you can take a moment to weave in all of your tails now or continue to work over top of them as we add our border. And you're going to grab your border color now. We're going to begin with a slip knot. I'm using white for my border. It's the same color I've been using as a border for all of the patches, or all of the squares, I should say, in the 2020 patchwork quilt blanket. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to start by working across the top of patch number nine, the last patch we did. And I'm just going to join my yarn with a slip stitch in the top of the last stitch from the last patch. There go. Pull my tails in. Chain two to begin. Chain two counts as a double crochet. I'm going to double crochet in each stitch all the way across and I'll have 36 stitches across the first side of my border. The 36th or last stitch in that first side of the border row is worked into the top of the chain two. We're going to chain two ourselves to turn the corner and the first stitch of the second side of our border row, also 36 stitches along this side, 36 stitches along each side of your square. I'm going to double crochet into the same place that I worked the last stitch. So that's nice and tidy. That makes a nice little corner. There's your little corner there. And just like all the previous patches, if you're working down the raw edge of a uh, patch, it's two double crochet per row edge. We only have two patch edges to worry about here. So I'm going to work another double crochet into the edge of that first, first patch row edge. Make sure I get two stitches across the top of my hook. And then there's the next Always getting two stitches, so right through the stitch. And if it's a chain two, then just try to find the chains along the edge of that row. There we go. So that's the first six stitches worked. Then of course it's just double crochets across that middle patch. And there will be uh, 24 of them. So six, 24, and six, that makes 36 all the way across, and I'll catch up with you at the end of this side. That's 36 stitches across the second side of our square, so 6 across the raw edge, 24 across the middle, 6 across the other raw edge. We're going to chain 2 to turn the corner, and I'm going to double crochet into the same place that I worked my last stitch, which is pretty much the top of that stitch across the top of this patch. And this side's really simple. You've got 36 actual stitches to work across. The last one will be in the top of the chain two over here. So 36 more stitches. Stitch number 36 for our third side is worked into the top of the turning chains from that row that sat on the patch before. We're going to chain two to turn the corner. I'm going to work the first stitch of the last side of my border row into the same place that I just worked my last one. That just creates a nice little corner. And it's exactly the same as the opposite side. So you've got six double crochets to work down those three raw edges, 24 actual stitches across the middle, Another three rows here, so you're going to work six double crochet across there. 36 stitches in total. Remember to work through the stitch if you're working through the side of a row. 36 stitches in total <laughs> for this last side, and I'll see you at the end. I've worked the last stitch of my last row so there's my last six stitches of the last row. Work the last stitch into the same place that I joined my yarn in. I'm going to chain two just to turn that final corner. And I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain two that began the entire border row. That's it. You can slip your yarn. Fasten off. Weave in that tail. Weave in any other little tails that may require it if you haven't been weaving them in or working over top of them as you go. 
can pull out those four corners. You'll have 144 stitches in total in your border row and four little chain two corner spaces. And that should be exactly the same as all the other squares that we've made so far in this patchwork quilt. Now, of course, there are no right and wrong sides to these squares because we go back and forth and back and forth. So whatever side you like best is the side you can use as the front when you go to add them all up. And there you have it, the double framed square. I really like how that one turned out and of course you can do it in a bunch of different ways like we discussed earlier and um, it's a neat way to use up your scraps. That's what all of these 2020 patchwork squares have been about. Using up what you've got on hand and getting that quintessential old-fashioned country patchwork quilt look going. If you haven't already started laying out your squares for this year and assembling them, you can start to do that. There is no one right way to stitch together your squares. You can sew them together, you can single crochet them together, you can slip stitch them together, you can do it however you want, depending on how much yarn you have left. Remember, we're gonna put on a nice simple border like we do every year, but there's no one specific way to put together your squares. I'll probably be sewing mine together because I wanna make sure that I have enough white yarn left to include it in my border. If you're looking for help on how to stitch together squares, we'll have a whole bunch of links in the description box down below that you can check out. Different ways to put your squares together and of course one of the ways we did back when we did a square blanket in 2017, that's how I'm going to be putting my squares together. You can put your squares together in any order and since we are coming up on the end of the year, we thought we would talk about assembling a little earlier just so you can get started, especially if you intend to give this blanket away as a gift. That said, we hope you enjoyed making the November square along with us, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.